Bonjour, everyone. Welcome back to the NRW. I'm your host, Rob Medina, and I thank you very much for joining me here today because today I will be reviewing the movie Petite Mamon. So I saw the trailer to this movie as of this recording well over a week ago. And when I saw the trailer, I was instantly hooked in with what I saw. I wanted to see the movie right away. And I got lucky enough to uh, get a screener for to check out this film. And I can truthfully say that I love this movie. I really, really, really did. I love the the the, the writing and directing of uh, Celine uh, Skiama, I believe is how you pronounce her, her last name. She did a phenomenal job with this movie. And, and there's a lot that I'm going to say about her her uh, choice of, of, of directing this film that I thought worked very effectively here that I'm, I'm wondering how some people who, I guess I could, you could say the average moviegoer may feel about the pacing of this movie, which I know some people may find a little, a little bit too slow for their taste, but I'll get into that with this review here. But here's one thing that I was actually kind of conflicted on, on how I want to go about this review. When I was thinking about how I wanted to talk about the film, the first thing that kept coming to mind was the that one particular moment in the movie that really kind of gets a lot of people questioning about what what's actually really going on and if it's actually real if that makes any sense and then when I get into the review you'll understand what I'm talking about here but it, in thinking about that I was going to say I'm going to hold off on that and just let you see for yourself and have you decide on how you want to how you want to perceive that but I thought well the film is so good that I think I can just talk about that one particular moment in the movie and still not ruin the film for you because once you get to the end of the film, not, not that it's going to be a surprise ending, but it'll make a lot more sense, which I thought worked so effectively here for me. So I will get into a little bit of the spoiler here, but I wanted to get to that point. I'll let everyone know here from case if you don't want to be spoiled with anything about this movie at all, other than just the general, um, general, general beats of the story, which I'll also be getting into here as well. So I'll get into the plot, then I'll get into my positives, my negatives, and then my rating. Nellie just lost her grandmother and is helping her parents clean out her mother's childhood home. As Nellie explores the house in nearby woods, she's immediately drawn to a neighbor of her own age building a treehouse, what follows a tender tale of childhood grief, memory, and connection. And that right there is the film in a nutshell, so now let's get into my positives. My first positive here with this film are with the two young actresses who play the characters of Nellie and Marion. Josephine and Gabrielle Sands, who are the leading actresses in this movie, uh, and, and, I, and they're, they're siblings in real life too, I believe they're twins if I'm not mistaken, they are the best things about this film. They pretty much are the heartbeat of this movie here. But what I want to point out about in this case for the character of Nellie played by Josephine is this. You follow her first, and let's say in the first five minutes of the film, here's what I want to point out about this particular story is that... Um, We've seen countless films where grandkids, uh, ch children in general, lose a loved one. And sometimes, you know, you get a perspective of how they feel about the situation. But something in a lot of ways, it seems kind of rushed. I'm not trying to say that every film does this here, but the most common things you see about uh, stories where a, a child is going through a loss, it does get handled kind of quickly, where they just... They, there's there's a quick emotional impact and then the story moves quickly and then the next set of events occur so you don't really have a whole lot of time to let things sink in as well some films do it well despite the the short uh, the short amount of time we get to spend with the kids in that particular uh, scene there but in this movie on the other hand when uh, jo I'm sorry I meant to say when uh, Nellie played by Josephine finds out that her grandmother passes away one of the first things she says was I wish I had I could say goodbye to her and I believe her, her mother said, well, you did say goodbye. Like, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it the right way. It was something along those, along those lines. I, f I found that to be really profound in that respect because there was no, I hate to say this, it wasn't very stereotypical. It was not like she's sad and she's crying and I miss my grandma. I mean, she clearly does miss her grandmother, but it was just handled so beautifully where she was very composed and took the time to reflect on something and then have the the awareness to say to, 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 the, to say to her mother that I wish I could have said goodbye better. That's pretty much what it was. And her mother's trying to comfort, well, you did. But no, but not the way that I should have. I just wish I had the opportunity to do that, to say goodbye to her properly. And something about that like really uh, connected with me. And then what was also unique about the character of Nellie is that this is a, a young girl who is years ahead of herself if that makes any sense in a lot of ways i think that she's actually a lot more mature and a lot more uh aware than her mother and her father not to not not to uh, put any slight on that that's not the, what i'm trying to point out here but 
it's clearly obvious that Nelly is fully aware of her surroundings and points that points that out to her family, to her mom and her dad, even to the point where she starts questioning them and she's not afraid to speak her mind. And I'm not saying that her parents are suppressing her in any way. That's not the case at all. But she's very aware of what to ask, how to ask and when to ask. And then points out certain things about her family. Well, you know, you don't do this very well, but you do this well. And how come you don't talk about this when I ask you about these certain things? Because I actually want to learn more about this. Like just the the awareness of her having to ask those really profound questions, even though they're very simple questions, but just the way that she's bringing up the questions at the time where the parents are more or less vulnerable, and she's able to bring something out of them in that in that in that particular time and in, in that conversation with her with them, where she's able to find more insight about them that I thought worked very effectively. And the beautiful thing about this uh, this story too, and I know I'm kind of going all over the place at this point right now, but it moves at a really slow pace. It moves very, very slow. But and I'm not saying slow in the that it's boring. It's not the case at all, but it works. It moves very slow. And the movie's only an hour and 17 minutes and some change, which is odd because I thought that considering what the story is, is, is uh, the direction of the story is heading here, I'm always one to say that you need more time to fill in those gaps. But this movie, in my opinion, handles that so, so brilliantly, in my opinion. It just handles it very, very well. There's literally no other distracting things that's taken away from a time from the story. And it's not um, shortening scenes to just to get it from point A to point B. You have time to spend with the character of Nellie to really understand her perspective. Because then when... Um, as, as her, her, and her, her mother and her father and herself are all helping out and cleaning out the house, her mother's deeply affected by all this here where you know Nellie's asking her questions about her childhood and she and her mother reveals certain things about her background from when she was a kid that um, clearly she couldn't really cope with at that moment. So she just walked away from it all. Not that she was leaving the family, but she just walked away from it. So now it's just her and her father uh, left behind to pretty much finish cleaning up the house. But in that time, she goes in... Um, decides to look around the, the, the woods of where of where they're at and that's where she comes across a young girl in Mary who's the exact same age her and the and the thing that I remembered when I saw the trailers that these girls look so much alike I wonder if they're twins and yes they are but I found it to be unique that they look so similar in the story there's got to be a reason for that I remember the first thing that crossed my mind and yes there is a reason for that which I'll be getting to in my spoilers in a quick minute but the the uh, the actress uh, Gabrielle Sanz who plays the character of Miriam this is a part of the story where it offers a different perspective of how they handle themselves when it comes to how they are having to deal with, um, in this case, let's say, when some when they themselves are not well, and then their mother, in this case for Marion, is also not well. So it's almost like the the borderline of like that if things go awry you know they could die quickly if, if i hope that makes sense but without really revealing too much about this background here for these two characters but they're both not in the best best health but they're on that borderline that if if things are not handled well that they could pretty much be dead at any moment here and you get to see the concerns of of this character marion and how she is coping with that but handling it in a very mature manner as well too which i thought to be really to me that was really impressive but it's it was interesting for me to see that where Nelly has a, a really good relationship with her parents, and then Marion, who does have a pretty good relationship with her mother, but there's a distinct difference in how they, and where the, where they these two children are at their point of their lives, and how they're having to, how they're aware of certain things and how they handle themselves and they're keeping themselves composed, but one doesn't have certain concerns whereas the other one does have more of these concerns that they have to be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis here. And seeing from that perspective, but then they come together and they realize they have so much in common with each other that they can um, they can just have fun and, and open up and, and just enjoy their time together, even though they're only gonna be there for, at least in this case, Nelly's only gonna be there for a short period of time. It is then revealed later on, uh, as I was starting to question certain things along the way about how, how they look so much like each other, well, this is the, the spoiler here. So if you don't want to any reveal, any, any um, if you don't want to be revealed by the spoiler here, I recommend that you just pause the video and check out the film, then come on back here. But if you don't care, here we go. Nelly reveals to her to Marion that um, she is her daughter from the future. Marion is actually the same name as her mother, uh, Nelly's mother. 
Now, when this was revealed, I remember thinking like, is this legit? Is it, did I actually hear what I said? So I rewound that part back and, and watched it again, listened to it again. And I was actually quite shocked. Um, not like Sixth Sense shocked, but I was just quite shocked that I heard that. But I wouldn't say it didn't make any sense to me, but I was just curious to see how that was handled here because I remember thinking like, I don't understand how this even happened if that's really the case here. But here's the thing. When you when you go back, uh, when, in this case, when they when the two characters go back to Marion's home, uh, the young Marion, uh, to her house, the house is exactly the same as her mother's childhood home. There's a there's a secret little uh, closet in the hallway that's at her mother's childhood home that the young Marion does have at her home, and she lives with her mother who's not very well, and we come to find out that that's her grandmother. There's a beautiful scene in in, uh, in the film where Nellie does have the opportunity to tell her grandmother goodbye before she ends up having to leave, which I thought was so beautiful. And I know I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but that revelation right there, I remember thinking, um, I hope it's not going to go awry from here because the story was so good up to that point that I just thought that it could either go, it could just be go, it can go in the right direction or it can just go all kinds of wrong. And honestly, it was handled so beautifully after that. I'm not going to reveal what the ending was here because I think that's actually the most important part of the story here with the build up to that ending that I thought worked so effectively in my opinion. There's just so much about this film that I truly did admire and respect. But a lot of it does also have to do with the directing under Celine uh, Scami, if I pronounce, if I, if I recall correctly how, how I pronounce her name. What she had written and what and the way she directed this film is so beautiful. I, quite frankly, I don't think there's a single mistake that she's made in terms of the technical aspects of the film, the cinematography. I know she's not the cinematographer, but the way the film looks, the way the film was edited, the way the film is paced, it is done beautifully in my opinion. But speaking of the pacing of the film, as I said before, this is a very short film. It's 80, I'm sorry, I meant to say it's uh, 117, sorry, I meant to say it's, a hundred, it's an hour and 17 minutes. I'm fucking up here, but an hour and 17 minutes and some change. Usually, whenever there's a really good story and it's only 90 minutes long, majority of the time I always point out that the film needs to be longer. The film is, is right at the exact time that it needs to be at, in my opinion. It is at the right amount of time that you have with the characters to spend time with them, to get to know them, and actually let the events sink in, let the environment sink in to really absorb the story and it's done beautifully. I don't think the film needed to go any longer than that. And quite frankly, it is. It cuts off right at the exact moment that it needs to be cutting off. At, at least in my opinion, I should say that it ends where it needs to end. And it and it's done so beautifully, in my opinion, that I remember thinking, like, how how was she, how was Celine able to pull this off in telling a very short film, but make it feel like I was there for such a long, lengthy period of time? where I was definitely immersed. As cheesy as it sounds for me to say this here, but it's true. I, I felt like I was definitely immersed in that environment, in that world, in that story that kept me invested all the way through, literally from start to finish. And that's something that can, that can never be accomplished very often here. And I think Celine had done a really good job in bringing, at least for me, bringing me into the story and allow me to be invested with what was going on here and never once questioning the... Um, her, her decisions. I mean, I did question like how it's going to happen. I was, I was, I had some doubt. I did doubt uh, the story at certain points because it was getting so good in this revelation about her being that Nellie's her daughter is Marion's daughter in the future. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't uh, deterred with that. But I remember thinking like, uh, can it still carry on with that momentum we were already getting up to this point? And the answer is yes. So there's literally so much about the film that I can go on about here. But I think you kind of get the idea that I don't have anything else really bad to say about the movie i mean i can see that some people may say the film might be rather slow and a little boring um i don't agree with that i think the film is is beautifully paced and is, and is shot very well beautifully acted um has a very effective and, and really uh compelling story i honestly don't have anything really bad to say about the film at all i, I truly don't i would have to watch it again to really um to to really see if I if there is any negatives that will stick out for me not that I have any intention to looking for that but I, I'm gonna have to see it again to really see, uh, to see if there's any particular parts of the story that I just did not like or thought could have been done maybe did better but I wouldn't say better that's probably not the best way to say it but that probably didn't work for me that's what I wanted to say 
So honestly, I don't have any negatives about this movie at all, but I will have to see it again to really make sure that's the case here because so far from what I've seen here so far, this is a damn near perfect movie in my opinion. So um, I'm just gonna get right into the review of my rating here. I give this film a, a solid cheers. And those are my thoughts on the film. If you have seen the movie, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I truly recommend you guys check out this film. It really is that good. In my opinion, I think there's going to be a lot that people can take away from this movie that they would hopefully enjoy as well. Um, but if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the NRW. Make sure you share, like our videos, and hit the notification bell while you're down there. Follow us on our social media accounts on Instagram, New Release Wednesdays, on Facebook, Nerds Rule the World, and on Twitter, at the NRW. And you can follow me on my social media accounts on Instagram and Twitter, Mr. Rob Medina, and on Facebook, simply just Rob Medina. And I have a show on the channel called You're So Cool with Rob Medina, and my guest this week is a queer core band called Middle Aged Queers. But that episode will be dropping this Friday here, and um, I cannot wait for you guys to check it out. I hope you guys will enjoy it as well, too. But I also have a, a social media accounts for the show as well. On Instagram, You're So Cool with Rob Medina, and on Twitter, You're So Cool with WRM. And I want to thank you all very much for checking out this review. I hope you guys did enjoy it, and until next time, everybody, stay safe out there, and... Cheers.